hire another one. Nothing will satisfy the desires of the sons and the daughters of Adam except the dust of the grave. Nothing is going to satisfy our desires. The only time that our desires will end is when we are dead. So you see, a civilization, if we can call it a civilization, or a philosophy or an ideology that teaches us that the way to be happy in life is by satisfying your passions and your desires, by following your cravings, physical and emotional and ideological, that success in life is by surrounding yourself with material possessions. The reality is, we know that this brings no long-lasting satisfaction. We buy something nice, we buy some new clothes, we get a new house, we get a new car, but how long does the joy and the pleasure of that last? A few hours, a few days, maybe a few years, but before long we are cra craving for something more expensive, more beautiful, more fast, faster. If our, we get our kicks from adrenaline, then we try this sport and that sport, but always we are looking for something that is going to give us more of an adrenaline kick. Similarly, some people satisfy their passions and their desires through sexual encounters, promiscuity, but there is no satisfaction. Because once you have tried everything, then you need something else to excite you. You need something else to stimulate you. So people go further and further down the road. Fetishes, orgies, same-sex relationships. Or it's not enough anymore that you have your own wife. You have to go and you have to enjoy yourself with another man's wife. That's how you have to get your kicks. Because this is the reality. You're never satisfied. It doesn't matter how much money you have, you want more. It doesn't matter how much fame and success you have, you want more. It doesn't matter how beautiful you are, you want to be more beautiful. This is the reality. So when we look at Western society, what do we find? We find something pretty horrifying. We find a whole culture completely obsessed with consumerism. And what is the result and what is the consequence of that? What is the result and the consequence? The consequence is that we have a very minute portion of the world's population consuming a huge portion of its resources. 17%, 17% of the world's population consumes 70% of its resources. One seven, 17% of the world's population consumes 70% of the world's resources. We know that the rainforests are being destroyed. We know that our environment is being polluted. We know that there is starvation. That people are dying. People do not have basic sanitation. People do not have basic access to clean water, to food, to basic medical care. But where is this taking place? These things are taking place in the so-called third world. But if you look to these so-called third world, you will find something very strange. You'll find these people are actually exporting food. They are export Although the people are dying, they are exporting food. Although they don't have sufficient medicines, they are exporting the ingredients to make the medicines. They don't have sufficient Resources to clothe themselves, the people do not even have clothes, yet they are making clothes for other people. Where is this food being exported to? 
Where are these ingredients and these resources and these minerals being exported to? Where are these clothes, these fashions, where are they being exported to? Who is consuming all of these things? The West, America, Australia, Europe. That small percentage of the world's population controlling, consuming and exploiting the resources of the world. Why? Because of a way of life, the Coca-Cola culture that teaches you that the way to enjoy your life is by following your passions and your desires and satisfying your base animalistic instincts. This is the reality. And in order for this society, this culture, to continue to exist, it is necessary that large portions of the world's population lives in poverty and is subjugated politically, economically and ideologically. Because the Western capitalist materialistic system depends on being able to exploit people. It depends on being able to acquire food and minerals and resources and labor at the most minimal cost and to be able to repackage it and resell it at the maximum cost. This is the reality of the Coca-Cola culture. This is the reality of the materialistic philosophy that is now dominating the world in which we live. And the reality is that the Western world will stop ultimately at nothing. Wars, instigating wars, inventing wars, murdering people, bombing them, killing them, it is all not really important in order to achieve the ultimate goal of dominating the world economically and politically and militarily. Why? As they say, to guard our precious way of life. That's what they say. That's what George Bush told us. To guard our precious way of life. Their precious way of life means that we are free to follow our passions and our desires, that the way to be happy is to have as many material goods as you can, and it doesn't really matter if the rest of the world suffers as long as we have our precious way of life. That's the reality. So what has this got to do with the Muslims? Why, therefore, do we choose this title the Coca-Cola Muslim generation. What is taking place here, of course, is a war, a conflict. Not a conflict, mind you, necessarily, of arms and weapons, but it is an ideological conflict. It is a war of ideologies. It is a war of worldviews. It is a war, a battle concerning what is the nature of the human being? What is the purpose of life? Why are we here? And what is the reason for our existence? And what is the means for the human being to achieve true success and true happiness? This is the war, this is the conflict that is taking place. So what we find is another world view, another ideology, another concept, and that is Islam. Islam teaches something quite different. Islam teaches that the way to success